Hello everyone, my name is Priyar Jithani. I'm an MD-MBA student here at Yale University. I've been doing a lot of residency deep dives recently because um, I'm applying to residency. And more importantly, I think it's, it's something I wish I had when I was a medical student applying for residency. And so today we're gonna talk specifically about psychiatry. Uh, we're gonna go over like the average step one and step two score for psychiatry residents. We're gonna go over the number of publications they often have, the number of service experiences. And in the process, I hope you get to learn a bit more about psychiatry and also just see the types of um, people it attracts. Uh, if you don't already know, as I mentioned, I make a lot of these videos. I've done one on general surgery, family medicine. I plan on doing one for internal medicine, uh, which is the specialty I hope to go into. All of this data that I'm going to share with you today is coming from the res report on residents, which is also going to be linked in the description below. Um, because I know some people may be watching this without having a full insight into psychiatry, and maybe you're not applying to residency yet, let's just go over the definition. This is from the American Psychiatric Association. Psychiatry is the branch of medicine focused on the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of mental, emotional, and behavioral disorders. It's usually a four-year residency that treat that gives you a general psychi psychiatric training. And then if you want to do a sub uh, subspecialization, there are a ton within psychiatry that you would you can do and you can get additional training in, such as child and adolescent psychiatry, uh, consult psychiatry, addiction medicine, uh, interventional psychiatry, such as uh, CBT, and geriatric. Um, so just to give you a bit of insight into the field. Today, I will also be comparing a lot of the statistics within psychiatry, like the average step one and step two score, with my field, which is internal medicine. And I'm not doing this, again, to show you one is better than the other. I'm only doing this because two of my best friends here are going to be psychiatrists, and I'm an internal medicine person. And so I just want to show you, like, you know, what are the different types of uh, numbers behind them, and also to show you the types of variation that exists and the types of differences uh, between specialties. So without further ado, let's just get started based on the demographics here. Uh, my glasses on. So you can see that this actually represents all the psychiatric residents in the United States. There's 6,725 total active residents. And remember that most psychiatry programs are about four years. So um, this is 6,725 across four years of psychiatric training across all the specialties, across all the hospitals in the United States. Of the 6,725, 18.9% are international medical graduates, 63.4% uh, are MD graduates, and 17.7% are DO graduates. 49.8% are male and 50.2% are females. And I will tell you, this is about as even of a split as I've seen in any specialty, which is incredible. Uh, and you can also see that the split between male and females is about the same, even but among like IMGs, MDs, and DO. So quite interesting. And this is interesting because, as I said, compare this now to my field, which is internal medicine. You can see that in, internal medicine is a little bit more male-dominated, 56.4% uh, males, 43.6% females. Also notice that psychiatry, there's only 6,725 residents. Internal medicine has around 29,000 residents across the United States. Again, this is more a factor of the need of um uh, the need of those residents. Like internal medicine just has a much larger demand because they're more like the general medicine individuals, where psychiatry is a little bit more specialized of a field. And that's why there's fewer individuals there. Right. Now, uh, for the part that most people really are interested in, uh, this is for the first year incoming intern class into psychiatry. And this represents their step one and step two CK score. Step one is, is on the left and step two CK is across the top. Um, and the intersection of the two tells you like, uh, the step one and step two overlap. So if you go to this column, for example, you can see that this represents that 11 in incoming psychiatric residents had a step one score between 230 and 239 and a step two score above 259. And notice that again, this is for the individuals who matched between 2020 and 2021 into psychiatry. So one, the fact that they match means that they're going to have higher scores. Two, the fact that they um, are between 2020 and 2021 means that, you know, if you're watching this video in the future, this is obviously may not be as relevant. Um, and so now you can see if you actually even go across a full row, you can see that 1.8% of psychiatry residents had a step one score above 259. Uh, and about like, 6.8% of psychiatry residents had a step 2 CK score above 259. And if you want to then get the granular details, that's what this page is for. And here you can see that the average um, step 1 score and step 2 score are listed. Step 1, 223. Step 2, 236.7. And you can see the average complex scores are also listed. Fewer people take complex than step 1 because complex is required for usually DO schools and most MD schools will not require the complex to be taken. And most individuals... Um, 
at DO schools who may want to um, apply for more competitive specialties also take the step one and step two, um, just because it, I, I don't actually know the details, but I just know that they do it because it usually is required or heavily, um, heavily encouraged, right? So um, all that to say the average step one and step two CK score here, the 75th and 90th percentiles are also listed. So what that means is if you had a step two CK score of 257, you scored better than 90% of um, uh, accepted or matched psychiatry residents between 2020 and 2021. And you can then apply that reasoning across all the domains. Um, you might just want to wonder how this compares to other specialties. It's actually remarkably similar, right? So you can see like the average step one CK, step one score is 231 and the average step two CK score is 242 uh, for internal medicine, which is my specialty. Psychiatry is, is again, very similar. The bigger point here is just to show you the wide variation of step one and step two CK and complex level one and complex level two scores you can get and still match. And more importantly, to show you that this variation exists in every field. Every damn field has variation. And I know that people generally say, oh, to match into this field, you should definitely have a score above this. I, I show these statistics to show you that there's usually always individuals who defy the norm. And even if you have great scores, that doesn't always mean you'll get in, right? So take all of this with a grain of salt, but more importantly, understand just how different, um, just how, even though you may think specialties are different, they're actually quite similar at the end of the day. Um, next, I wanted to uh, combine uh, the step one and step two CK scores, uh, as well as complex level one and complex level two with the number of research experiences that individuals had in psychiatry. So again, this is uh, for the 1800 matched individuals coming into psychiatry. The um, average number of volunteer experiences, um, let me actually double check here. The average number of volunteer experiences is listed right here, 7.1, 3.9 for work experiences, 5.0. Uh, for abstracts, publications, and uh, presentations, and 2.6 uh, research experiences. Now I just want to end with, again, the comparison to internal medicine, um, just to show you how similar they are, right? So um, again, the average number of research experiences is 2.5, 5.2 in internal medicine for abstracts, publications, and presentations, 4 for rare work experiences, and 5 for volunteer experiences. And notice how these numbers, again, are, are relatively comparable across specialties. The only thing that you'll see is that there is an upward trend for all of them, because obviously as you go from like 50th percentile to 90th percentile, those individuals will have more uh, experiences. Um, so I hope this was helpful for everyone. Uh, if it was, please drop a like. If you have any questions, drop them below. Um, I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, please subscribe if you can. It means a lot to me. And in the meantime, uh, take care of yourself and someone else too if you can. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.